China's got a a, a chip problem, okay? Doritos, and this, yeah. no, I mean, th- this might seem very strange to a lot of people. It seems almost absurd to think that China d- doesn't have the technology to make microchips. Because yeah. everything is coming from China these days. Every time you buy a piece of electronics, it's coming from China. So you would think, oh, well, obviously they can make the chips that go into these things. But actually they can't. They, they can to a certain degree. Yeah. Very basic level stuff. But when it comes to the high level things like uh, CPUs and GPUs and you know the, the latest technology, China still lacks the ability to create these things. Yeah. And I mean, this is just simply because they didn't have to. Okay, for the longest time Why? now, Why bother? there's no need because it takes an incredible amount of research and development and a yeah. lot of technology and a lot of know-how and a lot of money to develop these things. And China just buys that stuff mm-hmm. or licenses it. So, you know, here you are a Chinese factory. You need to create a gizmo. That gizmo needs a little processor in it. That's the brains of the unit. You don't have to buy it. I mean, you don't have to make it. You buy it. Yes. Okay. And then you just stick it in your gizmo. Right. Simple. That's what's been going on for, for the longest time. Um, but now, because of sanctions against China, and also for the longest time now anyway, Xi Jinping has been pushing for self-reliance of China. So he's like, we don't want to buy stuff from the outside world. We want to create everything here. Mm. And in order to do that, um, we need to go out there and steal all the intellectual property and all the ideas so we can make it here. Thousand Talents Program. Yeah, Thousand Talents Program. Because uh, because that's what's been happening, mm. Okay. Uh, of course, the the real ideal situation would be for things to be developed and homegrown. In other words, invented in China. But China currently lacks that ability yeah. for various reasons. One of them being uh, the educational system in China is more about doing something uh, that you're told and learning how to do something in a certain way rather than being creative. And uh, There's a lot of stuff. We're not going to go into it. But the, the end result is that China has problems developing their own chips. Very good at making stuff to a certain design, reverse engineering, um, and we see that with everything from military hardware to whatever. But making their own chips has been an issue. All right. Um, anyway, something very interesting has happened over this past week. First, I want to show a little clip from Huawei's self-driving. You know, Huawei's Tesla knockoff that they've got right now, okay, has a self-driving capability. Yeah. Just like Tesla. That's right. And this is it being demonstrated in China. And the guy who's taking this test drive, he's got a saleswoman with him. He asks in Chinese, is this thing good at recognizing people? Right. Let's see what happens. So she says, yes. Oh, it's very good at recognizing people. And, you know, it'll avoid them and stuff. Yeah. And by the way, listeners, yes, we did laugh at someone getting hit by a car, but it was very slow. Yeah, it was very slow. They didn't didn't get injured. Um, And okay. Yes, we did laugh at someone getting hit by a car. To be fair, autopilots and cars, uh, you know, AI, they are not prepared to deal with China's traffic. No. Seriously. It's a. It's a battlefield. Yeah. It's just like... No. We, it's like... <laughs> what? You we know? Call, you know the, the person that came out there and hit the car? We call them poppers. We actually yeah, we a, call them poppers. They're called poppers because they literally pop out of nowhere. Right? Like that. Like, without looking, street. without yeah. looking, they just cross the road. And this happens, uh, especially when you get out of the city centers in a lot of towns. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Oh, you so if you watch for poppers. They don't look. We still have PTSD from poppers. Yeah, and still, every time I drive here in the States, when I see a car or something on the side of the road, I'm like, oh, I, I get that when reaction. When people pull out, because we live in kind of back roads, mm-hmm. when I see people pulling out of their driveway, I yeah. my heart pounds and I go, ah, oh, they're <laughs> yeah. going to pop. Yeah. You know? Exactly. It reminds anyway. me of rural China. Yeah. Uh, anyway, China has a lot of catching up to do with, in all fields, even though they put on a very good slick game of propaganda. Sure. And you see all these videos out there praising China's new tech and all that. So oh. let's get on to the main part here. <clears throat> a Chinese company called PowerStar um, has just announced a new homegrown domestic CPU. That's their line. They're the company's power leader, right? Is it? Oh, sorry, power leader. Yeah, sorry, power leader. The, yeah, Power Star is the uh, CPU. What is it called again? Power Leader? More like what? Uh, it's like lack of power follower. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> weak follower. Yeah, weak follower. That's it. <laughs> weak follower. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, so weak follower 
because <laughs> you'll find out that's what they are. Um, they released this. Now, it made big news in China because this is supposedly their first homegrown CPU. Yeah. Okay. This is something that's made in China, domestically made in China, for China, by China. And that's got, can I say something? Yeah. That's got to scare all these people that are putting these restrictions on China because yeah. that means they just defeated all these sanctions mm. and all these restrictions and China just won the chip war. I'm yeah. basically just reading headlines from CCP propaganda. Yeah, YouTubers. you'll see a lot of this. Oh, too bad. Like, oh, Biden screwed up. You know, America screwed up. China's, America lost. Yeah. The oh, no. War. China really did. So anyway. Uh, by the way, mm -hmm. is that something to 5G or? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all got to do with this nonsense. AI 5G expertise. Anyway, so here's the long, the, the short story of the long, so to speak. They've come out with a CPU and they had a press release about it, right? And this is a company, and what's kind of interesting is I looked into the company and they basically just used to specialize, specialize in data center markets. Mm -hmm. So they would take care of like your server room and set things so up. So unrelated. Kind, kind of unrelated and they used Intel-based stuff anyway, like all this stuff's Intel-based. In the past. So they'll set up your server room and they'll put your servers in there with Intel CPUs. Anyway, they're like, now we've got the first homegrown um, CPU. So let's take a little closer look at this um, at this CPU. Let's zoom in. Enhance. Enhance. You enhance this. You actually did it. Enhance. Yes. Let's get closer. Enhance. 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 Yes. Let's take it to the crime lab look computer. Look at you. Yeah, enhance. crime lab. Wow. Yeah, it's enhance. What do we see there? Oh, what did you find? Okay, so... This is some real work, <laughs> detective work you've done. Well, I mean, I can't take credit because pretty much every tech magazine covered this because when you look at it, because they also put an image of it in their press release of the actual CPU, and you line it up next to a 10th generation Intel Core i3 processor, which, by the way, for those of you who don't know CPUs, the i3 is kind of like the entry-level... Um, cost-cut version of the i5, i7, all that stuff. So it's like your, your cheaper one, right? Mm -hmm. You put them side by side, they are identical. And I, when I say identical, I mean identical. The silk screening on the actual you know, chip, when you look behind the, whatever you call that, heat, heat spreader. The silk screening. Is, yeah. A lot of people don't know. Well, it's just, just like the markings that you can see mm -hmm. like on, the the, on the chip itself. Um, you can see there's like a weird QR code. If you can see this image, you'll be able to see on the, the top sort of right-hand side of this, the, the CPUs. You've got what's called the heat spreader on top. That's that metal cap. First of all, those are identical, 100% identical. Mm. And then if you look on the right side, you'll see like a little weird machine marking QR code thing. Those are also the same. Oh, okay. The numbering scheme on the top left of the thing is also the same numbering scheme. And then if you look closely at the actual stuff that's hmm. printed, you know, on the actual heat spreader over there, it's kind of sus. sus. Because if you look, the uh, Intel runs has got a 3.7 gigahertz uh, clock. Yeah. If you look at the Chinese power, the weak follower one, it's also a 3.7 gigahertz clock. I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking at this, right? Yeah. Would it be out of the realm of possibility for a chip to look identical? Like you see how the like the folds on the corners yeah. and all that stuff. Would it be out of the realm of possibility that another chip would would look exactly like that, or is it, would that be weird? It's weird because look, of course, you would have to conform to the socket, so there would be certain similarities. Sure. But the fact that you can see every little pin and every little dot and every little thing is identical. There's no change. That means that it's pretty much a, a P3. But it doesn't just end that. Let's pretty look at, much. I mean, uh, I mean, it is an i3. <laughs> Let's take a look closer because if we look at the model numbers, okay, the Intel's called an i3 10105. Okay? okay. So that's like a model number. Yeah, exactly. If and you were to buy it, you'd type in the ISBN or whatever. Yeah, yeah you type yeah. that in. That's that specific uh, model of that chip. On the, the weak follower, it says P3 instead of I3, okay? So it's P3, 01105. So they just took one, one of those ones and moved it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You that. see that? They, so instead of like one zero, they put zero one. Oh my 105. god. 105. So even the model number is pretty much the same. Wow. Okay. This is literally just an I3, but probably like a crap one. Like a crap one that they just refurbished. Well, I mean, this. the thing is, when you dig a little deeper, take a look. I'll show you a little clip here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, there I've got them closer for those of you who want to like pixel peep this or take a very close look. Um, you can see it's the same chip. But this is a, a video that was going around mm -hmm. showing how you can take an old I3 or an old processor and they use a laser to basically wipe off the... the you know, the markings, and then uses the same laser machine to etch in new 
text. See? Let's see. Oh, okay. So there we go. That's all you need to do. So that's not like a... And I guess in my mind, I would think that's a very complicated process. No. It's not. No, no. I mean, that's it's literally... You can buy an Intel processor, stick it in one of these laser etching machines. It cleans the surface and then puts whatever text you want on there. Okay, before we get into the implications of that, I just wanted to ask you, why does it matter? Why does it matter that China can make its... Just in case people are out of the loop, why does it matter that China could make its own CPUs? Because then it would uh, end its reliance on foreign imports. And probably but, be able to sell them as well, right? Yeah, sell them yeah. overseas. But the most important thing is the Chinese government right now... I'll just show that to you guys one more time. There's a, uh, an Intel processor. They just wipe off the, the Intel branding and whatnot. And then... Um, go ahead and uh, put on whichever custom branding they want. You could call it anything you want. You call it buttholes, yeah, surfer. Yeah, anything you want, yeah. yeah. And also, for those of you who are wondering, like, what if you put it in a computer? Doesn't it show, like, because you can see the properties and run CPU things? There, there are ways for them to uh, overwrite that code so oh. that it shows a different name. Yeah, because it would be... It would be talking to your computer and telling you what the schematics and... I mean, it, it'll just and... work as an x86 compatible processor but when you go look at the properties yeah. it'll say intel whatever in there oh. but you can actually you can remap you that. can read you can rewrite that it's oh. actually possible they do that with those memory sticks and stuff you know when they say that it reports like a gigahertz a, yeah. a gig sorry a gig size but it's actually like 64 megs yeah. or something you know they could do that it's pretty easy yeah actually i always mm -hmm. bring this up but i bought like what a thousand usb drives and all of them were empty yeah they're all didn't Just work fake. yeah yeah, anyway, so the, the whole point is right now, because China's got this whole let's make everything domestic, right? Let's make everything China only. Yeah. The government is pumping billions of dollars into it. Yeah. And that means subsidies. Sure. And that means that a company, if they're smart, they can get that money. Yeah. Think about it like this. Here's here's a we're 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 weak follower comp co Ltd T, TM whatever Chinese okay? company yeah so we're that Chinese company we're like sitting at a board meeting we're like you know what we got to jump on the subsidies shit like we could make literally millions of an eye billions what do we need to do well we have to create a processor for the local market it's like well how can we do that that's nearly impossible yeah, yeah. but it's like look. All it needs to be is a fairly low power, just a desktop processor that can run like just normal like office computers and whatever, you know, yeah. just a everyday like what's what's currently on the what market. It, what does a government computer need? Yeah. And, right? and let's look what's currently on the market that fits all those needs. Oh, I3. They're low cost. Yeah. They do the job. They do exactly what we want. And we can buy them very cheaply. And all we need to do is put our own markings on it. And we'll get paid billions in subsidies or hundreds of millions or whatever in subsidies from the government for creating this local thing. That's rich. And then we, you know, it'll cost us nothing then. We just break the money in. So what you're trying to say mm -hmm. is that a Chinese company, because of all this hype around China going to be self-sufficient, Xi Jinping said, we can do everything ourselves. We don't need these mm -hmm. other countries to help us out. And we yeah. don't care if they sanction us. Yeah. We can do everything ourselves. So there's billions of dollars on the table, if yeah. not trillions overall, to develop your own stuff. So they're saying we can't develop our own stuff. What we're going to do is buy shitty, cheap i3 processors. Yeah. Even if it doesn't get us profit to sell these, yeah, right? because it'll be cheaper, right? Yeah, yeah. You'll sell them cheaper. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because I got billions of dollars yeah. from the CCP. Exactly. It wouldn't matter. It's double self-own. Yeah, because think about it. They don't have R&D costs. They didn't have to develop it. They don't need the machines, the, the, the lithography machines and stuff to create these, right? So they don't need any oh, investment. Oh, I see. There's nothing. Yeah. They just have to have an office somewhere and say, oh, we make them in this factory. Right. You know what I mean? You just have a shell office. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need, need to do anything. Nope. You just have a dude unboxing i3s. Yeah, exactly. Unboxing i3s and on. putting the factory is there just to re-etch yeah. re the CPUs. That's insane. That, I mean, that is such a... It's, it'd be a failure if it was just a scam, like trying to scam like the customers, but they're actually mm. scamming the central government. Yeah, that's it's it potentially very dangerous to do that. Not only for them, but it's potentially dangerous for the entire economy that they're... Mm. Yeah, how much percentage of their economy they're dumping into this yeah. R&D for, R for their own self-domestic chips. Yeah, so just to clarify, by the way, everyone out there, is that there's no definitive proof that these are i3 processors. We can't say for 100% certainty, just look, just like but it. come on, like the evidence is there. If it looks like a duck, smells like a duck, walks like a duck, it's a duck. 
if it's a if it does all those things it's a what is it a power <laughs> it's it? a weak, weak follower. follower it's a weak follower um, cpu and i mean just to show show you like right now bringing cpus into china i mean here we've got a thing of a guy caught with 48 cpus which also they just look like those i3s don't they they could be i5s i7s i9s you know but um caught in his shoes and this is kind of an interesting thing you'd wonder he's like ow ow, ow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean surely you would damage crunch them. crunch they're all broken yeah yeah I mean, obviously they're not in the soles they must yeah, be yeah, on top of sure. his foot or something oh true true in like know? little bags or something May- yeah. maybe anyway there was i was always confused about the smuggling these things into china and i was like why would you, yeah, smuggle? Why would you smuggle in yeah why would you smuggle because you know like usually the biggest thing for me was you'd always see them catching people smuggling iphones in to china and i'm like why they're made here you know, when yeah. I'm living in China, why are they smuggling them tax. in? And it's because of tax. Because believe it or not, um, mm-hmm. if you buy an iPhone in China, it's way more expensive than an iPhone that you buy in the can States. It can be like 50% more. Yeah, it's super, because of all the tax, import tax, luxury yeah. tax, whatever they put on there. Um, and that, of course, is why it's kind of unfair dealing with China is because if you try to sell your product in China, like your car, if you're like, a, I don't know, Chevrolet and you try to sell a car there, you have to pay this huge amount of tax. People have to pay this tax. So it makes yeah. your product way less appealing than a local brand which doesn't have to pay that tax so they yeah. can make it much cheaper can i zoom out here for a second sure sure i think this chip thing you mm-hmm. know if it turns out to be true which it very much looks to be oh, yeah. that this company is power slave, yeah weak, whatever. weak follower is power slave a game uh i think it might be anyway this power company right yeah. the, the weak leader yeah weak, weak follower. follower yeah weak follower if it turns out to be true and these are just i3s and they're scamming the the ccp right yeah I want you to zoom out and look at this. What does this mean for China's big projects internationally, right? When you look at the Belt and Road Initiative, yeah. if you're dealing with this level of corruption that we've seen with our own eyes in China, yeah. we've seen the the sheer levels of scamming. When you go to a big tech company, yeah. I know a three-letter one that I won't say, sure. and their own leadership are taking all of the R&D and tech in their own company that's already stolen from Samsung and yeah. Sony and et cetera, taking that from their own company that they work for yeah, and then making their own factories to make even lower cost stuff. So mm-hmm. they're stealing from themselves. Yeah. You look at a chip company doing the same thing, but stealing from the central government now. Yeah. What do you think they're doing when that, even that strict lack of oversight in China is gone? Yeah. When you go to Mozambique yeah. and you're buying off a local dictator to build a, build a bridge that never gets finished, right? Sure. You can start to see why you don't do business with China on an international level with the government. Yeah. You the the potential for losing everything and nothing to be completed or actually done mm. is so massive that if you've done business in China like ourselves, you will know how much of this country is fake. Absolutely. Everything I mean everything has the potential to be faked. Yeah. And so that's why it's just hilarious why they need so much propaganda surrounding this topic. Yeah. Why there's so many YouTubers. I mean, you could look up China chips or whatever. You'll, you know, you throw a whatever, a duck at the wall. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. The blood will hit something. Yeah. Anyway, um, you'll see so many YouTubers working for the Chinese government. Mm-hmm. To spread this idea that China's pulled it off, everything and the done. U.S. is the loser. They're losing all this money because they can't sell chips to China you anymore. Actually, you found something very interesting. Yeah, what lots was of that? this. Well, there's a lot of uh, propaganda out there that oh no, you know America sucks now. Everyone's losing their jobs there because they can't sell chips to China anymore. They've lost their biggest market. They're so s- foolish to put sanctions. In other words, it's them saying. Just, just stop with the sanctions. We need those chips. Stop. You know, we're going to try and make trick you into selling to us again. Yeah. You know, but again, look, I want to play devil's advocate here. Okay. Let's just say for some reason that this is a homegrown. It just um, looks identical. It is identical. It is an i3. It's but let's just say it is like a homegrown sure. thing. It turns out there's sand. How, how can it be legitimate <laughs> that they use the exact same heat spread and the exact same everything? So even if it was homegrown, it's just a cheap copy. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't. So there's no domestically the, developed. At the thing. very best case scenario, it's just a very cheap shit knockoff copy of an already kind of defunct Dude, low it's power from, processor. From like 
2021 or something was the last time they made these i3s. You got me saying processor now. Yeah. I'm an anti <laughs> Okay. <laughs> processor is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But seriously, it's an it's old technology. You know, when it comes to computers, if you've got a CPU that's two years old, you're kind of falling behind. Yeah. So when your latest and greatest processor that you're bringing out is just a rebranded two-year-old CPU, or it's your knockoff of an old CPU, which is not going to be nearly as good as the real thing, you've got a problem. What do you expect when you name your company Weak Follower? Yeah, exactly. And the, the <laughs> thing is, up for disaster. In, Intel, I, I looked around. There's no licensing agreement from Intel. They haven't no. licensed i3s no. to be made. The last time they licensed a chip was in the, the 286 era. Whoa. Okay. So that's 80s. Yeah. There's no way they're going to be licensing their crap out no. to like this weird like little company in China. So no. just, <laughs> just, you know, I guess we're beating a dead horse here, but it, like seriously though, I think it it's just applies to so many things. It does. And how, how dare they think that people will fall for that? Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, look, this is my brand new invention. And I whip out like uh, something that's very common. Now, this also gives a lot of context to the geopolitical struggle with Taiwan. Yes. Why do you think <clears throat> China needs Taiwan Five. so badly? They could yeah. dominate the world with chips, right? They, they could. could. Yeah. But they can't without Taiwan yeah, because they yeah. can't make them. They yeah. literally... It looks like they're scrubbing them down and writing their name on shit i3s. Well, I got to tell you, because this goes deeper, okay? I, I just wanted 5G. to play a little thing here. It's a 5G phone. <laughs> Can you tell me, what is a 5G racing game? <laughs> Hold on, go back to the beginning. Okay. So this is a shill, right? Yeah, this is just, you see CGTN up in the corner yeah. there, so it's China State Media. I'm not familiar with this shill. His name's Adam Host. <laughs> Adam Host. <laughs> yeah. Adam Host. All right, see you. Okay. Yeah, dive. 5G. A 5G phone. He's playing a 5G racing game. Now, you know, this is typical China. If you throw the... the you just need to throw 5G on anything. They literally just keep saying it because they think if they say it enough, people will believe them. Like a 5G instant noodles. Yeah. It could be 5G anything. Remember? And AI. I saw AI on toys yes, that have AI. nothing to do with AI just because it has a battery in it. Yeah. So, you know, this is China pushing its whole homegrown uh, 5G AI nonsense. 5G. Yeah. yeah. What do you have Sharing a 5 and you're in the China's car is in the shape of a 5G? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. Anyway, you see all this nonsense. But, you know, this whole idea of fake chips from China has been a very long uh, standing problem. You know that. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples here. I watch a lot of old retro tech channels because, you know, I'm very much into the old computers and yeah. stuff. That's my hobby is, you know, cars and old tech. And the biggest issue people are having for, well, at least for the last decade or so, is when they need replacement chips for their old computers, right? So you've got an old, old stuff. Yeah, like a Commodore 64 yeah. or something, okay? And you need a, a specific chip from there. doesn't matter whatever it is. You can't buy new ones. No. I mean, some you can, sure. but like there are plenty that are not made anymore. Yeah. So what you do is you um, you go on eBay or whatever, and you find sellers that are selling all these chips because, you know, when e-waste, you know, they don't just crush it in a crusher, okay? It's just so funny word, e-waste. I know. But, uh, <laughs> Sounds like 5G AI. <laughs> it does. If you throw away like your old TV or something, yeah. it doesn't just get crushed. It ends up going to China uh, yeah. most of the time. And, you know, Hua Jian Bei, I used to walk around and see this, right? I, I don't want to always say this, but there was literally a factory outside of Huizhou that was yeah. burning VCRs from yeah. America. Yeah. Yeah. So what they... Burn them. Yeah, just burn them. Yeah. <laughs> so what happens is uh, they get sent to Shenzhen and you've got people literally sitting out in the open in the alleyways there, um, yeah. breaking things yeah. apart and taking the chips out. And then they go inside and they clean them up and then they sell them on eBay or they sell them back to other suppliers or they sell them to local companies in China yeah. that are making devices and they need a little IC chip, but they need a little memory chip or whatever. And so they buy these secondhand parts because they're cheaper, they're refurbished and they just use them, right? Mm. So you see that happening a lot. So a lot of these old chips are coming from China, but now, of course, there's not always a big supply of these things. And so the Chinese sellers are quite clever and they figure out, well, all we need to do is print the model number of the chip on there, sell it as that chip, send it all the way overseas. By the time the people figure out it's fake and doesn't work, they're not going to bother trying to send it back anyway and it was cheap, so they're not going to bother, right? Huge scam. And they use the, the, the China's free shipping uh, scam. You know that the China has that preferred trading partner, partner thing yeah. with the WHO and the U U Universal Postal Union? There's some port that's involved in that. Oh, you mean the port of Dandong? Probably. So anyway, they get to send these chips for free, 
they get their like $10 or whatever for a chip and they send you something fake. By the time you get it, it's like too late. So let's take a look like, for instance, uh, I watch these guys and a lot of them have this problem. So this guy's just putting some, I guess, isopropyl alcohol or something on, mm. on these chips. And you can immediately see the one at the top is obviously a fake. Take a look yeah, compared, like... compared to the others. And so he tested them. I've watched plenty of these. But now here's where it can be a problem. Okay. This happened, um, uh, I don't know, two years ago or so. But this okay. in 2020, three years ago. F-16 pilot died when his ejection seat failed. Okay. So it ejected, but the parachute didn't deploy. Mm. After like a pretty lengthy investigation, because his wife got involved, it looks like some of the chips in this uh, ejection seat sequencer module were counterfeit, fake wow. chips. Wow. Yeah. So wow. you can see here, um, six transistors had no conformal coating, were heavily gouged, had arcing scratch marks, were considered obsolete, and were suspected of being counterfeit. Wow. Well, and, rest in peace. That's terrible. I mean, yeah, it is terrible. And another thing about this whole recycling, because, you know, when it comes to counterfeit chips... Uh, from China, you do get counterfeit chips just like fake, like that one where the guy rubbed off the yeah. markings. Again, yeah. that's just fake. They just printed some rubbish on a chip that was in the same package. Yeah. So it's not the same chip. I mean, you can order a hard drive and it's full of sand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, another thing they do with the recycling is you might get a legitimate chip, but you get different grades of chips, right? Yeah. So for military-grade chips have got extra coating to heat. guard against radiation and heat and stuff yeah. like that, right? But they would have taken a chip out of a consumer product and just cleaned it up and sent okay. it over. A washing machine. Yeah, and it's right? not good enough, right? right? It's not good enough to be in an ejector no. seat, for instance. Right. So it won't work. <laughs> With jet fuel. <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's why they're saying like yeah. why, like uh, no conformal coating. So there's supposed to be a uh, uh, conforming coating on these things. Nothing oh. on there. Heavily gouged and arcing scratch marks. So that's from when they were like scrubbing off the glue or whatever. Or and whatever. So you know yeah. what I mean? But okay, this one aside, I'll give you another example of why these fake chips are a big deal. And that's uh, this Poseidon um, aircraft, which is a it's Boeing. A yeah, you know, it's kind of like the Aurora. Oh, you know, chef's French kiss. chef's French kiss, kiss, you know. Um, French kiss the chef. And it's got a module which has like an FPGA in it. And the whole point of this module is uh, to detect if the ice is forming on the plane. Yeah. Okay, and it warns you and it, it activates something. To, I don't know what it does, to be completely honest with you. But it's got to do with the icing, you know, icing on the wings and icing stuff. Icing on the cake. Yeah. So what happened was they found out that in this module, fa there were fake chips in some of them. Uh, and how they found out was plane took off and then they started hearing rattling noises from within the module because what happened was the chip popped out of its socket because it was a fake piece of crap and it was just rattling around inside. Now, no one died, but they could have. Someone because, died in that F-16 yeah, pilot Yeah, I mean, think about it. If that de-icing icing warning system is not working and you just get tons of ice on your plane and you crash, everyone could die, right? This leads me to believe this is a wider problem. It's huge. So what they did was they traced it back, okay? See, there's there's the correct one at the top, and there's a suspect. You know, when you start to look, you can see that they're not the same chip. So the exemplar is the correct one. Yeah, that's okay. the one. So what they did was they traced it back. And the supplier, because, you know, with the military, they subcontract. Yeah. And that's their weakest link. You know, they have to subcontract. They don't have people, like, making chips in the military. Shout out to Zelda. Um what, the, if the Link game? has a low HP, he's the weakest Link. <laughs> he really is. Because yeah, I know everyone's not watching our show right now and playing Zelda. Yeah, well, they got to learn that it's not such a great game. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> seriously, though. You're going to learn yeah, the hard way. Yeah, you will. You'll learn the hard way. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So ahead. they traced it back to a company in California, mm. um, sold 300 of these chips to the military. Okay. Wow. Now, what had happened is that company in California had purchased these 300 chips from a company that got them from Shenzhen, Ooh, China, where I used to live. That's where Huajian Bay is. That's yeah. where I told you where they take yeah. all the stuff out. And what they did is they tested the first, <laughs> the first 50 chips they tested and they passed, but they failed to test the remaining 250 chips. And within the rest of the 250 chips were a whole bunch of counterfeits. Ouch. That's Ouch. bad. That's bad. Bad oversight. That's not great. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to say like, you know, this was a, by the way, this is a Boeing, um, uh, you know, Poseidon, P-8 Poseidon plane in the military where they've got very strict quality control checks because it's the military. 
Uh. What's saying this crap doesn't end up in your domestic travel Airbus or Boeing? Yeah, that's true. You yeah, know? I didn't think about that. What if it's like a uh, civilian use, right? Delta, never, never yeah. mind military, civilian. Like yeah. how many millions of people fly every day? Delta Airlines is not going to have as st much strict quality control as the military. No. In fact, you know? it would be way less. JetBlue. JetBlue's going to be like, Airways. it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be like, let's get them chips. And they just hire, like, get get them. And they're probably going to end up being counterfeit a lot of the time. Burger King might so, die. Yeah. So, I mean. <laughs> Next time he's flying. I know. Burger King might, you yeah, know. Police yeah. underwater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that this this counterfeit chip thing yeah. is more than just a bunch of scammers making money off of retro guys fixing yeah. computers. It's dangerous. Yeah. Because these counterfeit chips from China can end up in anything. And it could end up in your car. Sure. It could end up in the, the airbag safety system. That's true. It could be anything. Yeah, and more and more, like, these kind of lower-end, kind of mass-produced chips are being used from China in our normal daily stuff. Because our yeah. think about, it, like, 20 years ago, less of our stuff had chips or of course. computer functionality. Yeah. Now everything does, right? Absolutely. Everything. Every single thing. Your hose. You yeah. know, you can have a, an AI hose. <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, dude. Automated hose thing. That could have mm. a chip in it. You know what yeah. I mean? A fire, a fire alarm. Yeah, you know that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So it's it's dangerous, right? And you just see the lengths that um, companies will go to, and especially yeah. with this so-called domestic CPU. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a Chinese state employee uh, works for uh, what's it called, China Daily. Mm -hmm. What does he say about this? Actually, oh wow, so good. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah, what are you so doing? He's, right? he's endorses this. I, I guess so. I think he might be confused. It's a, a little bit of a technological topic for him. Oh, yeah, you know, it, it's... Uh... Wow, that's a little too much for me. That's fine. He's yeah. saved, he yeah, saved his okay. ass there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he just doesn't understand how, yeah. how this all works. But look... What if you had a 5G toothbrush and it catches on fire, melts your hand, yeah. and then explodes in your mouth? You have no teeth. Yeah, exactly. Right? This is a huge problem. Remember those vapes that were oh. blowing up? Oh, yeah. That's chips, dude. Yeah. That's heat course. regulators. Yeah, and it's also uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that inside lithium batteries, there are little uh, chips and yeah. stuff in there to prevent things from going bad. What if you're some dude in an alleyway of Hua Chiang Bay? If you go there, you'll see how haphazard this stuff oh, yeah. is. This is yeah. not like a hermetically sealed lab. Yeah. You know, they're making vape batteries. Well, you, of course they're going to blow up. The, you know, that's this is an issue, and it's something I've seen with my own eyes a lot because I, I used to spend a lot of time in yeah. Huajambe. I've got footage of it where yeah, you've just course. got girls sitting there, like, taking components out of old stuff, cleaning it up, and then yeah. they just bundle it up, and then they sell it to the factories, yeah. you know? And, I mean, like, for instance here, people that do not have a trained eye, if they looked at these two chips, it would be very difficult for them to tell which is a, um, a fraudulent one because yeah. they have the same model numbers and so on on them. Yeah. So, like, how are you going to know? If you haven't seen a million of them before, how are you going to know that the font is a little different? You know what I mean? How would you? Yeah, so it's an issue. I wouldn't know unless yeah. you're like in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, who's, just who's taking apart their stuff looking for counterfeit chips? Exactly. Right, and this is yeah. ending up in consumer grade stuff potentially. Oh yeah, it, I mean it is already, and with chip yeah. shortages, you know, they get creative. True, dude. Like seriously, you know, this whole chip shortage has really like bred a huge new wave of counterfeit chips. That's true. It's so, like people are looking for a specific chip, and. You know, they can reprogram certain ICs and stuff to do other tasks. So, you know, quite often you'll get a chip which is branded as something and it works. It doesn't, doesn't work as well, but it just works. But it's not actually that chip. It's just been reprogrammed to do that task, you know? I think big chips behind this. Yeah, big chips. Anyway. Uh, think about this. What's that? Think about the the whole COVID thing, right? Yeah. Fort Dietrich leak the <laughs> virus in with the help of the Chinese government to get supremacy in the chip race. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, There's yeah. some guy on, like, Truth Social talking about Yeah, I'll about be talking show. about it, yeah. Anyway, um, let's move on from this. Don't want to get too technical, and a yeah. lot of it is... No, that was good. That was a really good report. Mm. Nice job. I just really would like people to understand how much of a big problem this is. Yeah. And it's not just some flash-in-the-pan no. thing. It's something that everybody kind of has to and be pardon, concerned about. Pardon the jokes. I just wanted to spice oh, you it got, up. You got, you got to keep it, it alive gotta, a little You got to chip it out, you know? You gotta, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Give us a sound bite. Let's, let's okay. What about the, like... Let's cleanse uh, the palate. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Probably eat, a, eat, eat someone's feces and it won't taste that bad if they've been eating chilies or something. I don't know. No. What the? <laughs> it looks like it should be eating you. <laughs> yeah. Hair, eyes, buttholes. Intestines yeah. I can I can stomach, but yeah. stomach I can't stomach. Yeah, stomach. it's not. But they were all just sitting around eating pig dick. Because the thing I ate was pig vagina. I ate pig dick. 
me. It's like eating genitals is just a bad idea. Sea penis. Sea penis. It looks and feels like a penis. Right. Yeah. In your hand. And it slithers around and it's moving. Right? It's so it terrible. Venomous. Giant centipede. <laughs> this is the end of my life. Yeah. Absolutely. That is the worst food in the world. That's, yeah, that might be the worst one yet. Oh, <laughs> It makes me weak. Ugh.